Stephanie, can we get started? All right, thank you. Good morning, church family. Welcome to Indian Nations Baptist Church. It is good to see everyone here today. We've got a big crowd. It's nice and rainy outside. It's nice and cozy in here. Let's all get nice and cozy together. So going to have a good day of worship today as well. Will you please bow your heads as I open us up in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that you, Father, give us to come together and to worship you, God. You are our almighty God. We thank you, God, for all that you do for us. Please, God, continue to bless our church and to bless our church family. Thank you, God, for this creation. Thank you, God, that we serve at your will, Lord. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to Sunday school each and every Sunday. We've got Sunday school at 10 a.m., and that is Sunday school for all ages. And, of course, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., we have our morning service, and you are always invited to that. Today we have a special lunch at Salatiska, and that will be at 1 p.m. And if anyone needs those directions to Salatiska, just get with... Uh, one of the deacons or, or any of us, we will give you some directions on how to get out there. Tuesday, we have 1 p.m. Bible study. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Bible study. If you look in your bulletin under coming up and notes, you'll see some notes there that we should take note of for the week. Donations for the Thanksgiving baskets are due today. We'll make arrangements to give out to the baskets to families this evening and on Monday. So those are two important dates to note, so please take note of that. The community Thanksgiving dinner is on Thursday. There is a menu on the bulletin board if you want to sign up or bring something. So that's downstairs. If you want to sign up, you'll, you can um, get on that as well. We do have a Fall Games 3-on-3 three -three basketball tournament today for 3.30 to 6.30. Um, we have different teams want, that where you can sign up. Angela, are they signing up through you? So get with Angela, or the board, the big board over here, the green board. If you want to get your team on there, you need to get it on the board so we can play. And we will also be playing with, or against, or with Salatiska, our sister church. So make sure you join. The Creeks um, were filmed for a storytelling scene yesterday, which took nine hours. This will be part of the Savior film, which will be dubbed in Creek. About a dozen of our members were participants, and it's something to look forward to seeing. So we'll look forward to that, and we can get, we'll get updates from Jennifer on that as well. Remember that November is Native American month, and you see some beautiful dresses out there. I see the Barnett ladies out, all have beautiful dresses on today, so... Different people are wearing their Native American clothing, and if you get, if you can, continue to wear that for the month. And we did have a men's camp out on Friday night, and I think Aaron might, might give us an update on that later on today. And again, like I mentioned before, we are invited to Salatiska for a Thanksgiving dinner. Everyone is invited. Please plan to leave in time to arrive by 1 p.m about a 30 minute drive and we do have a guest speaker today his name is John Doerr and we'll he'll get a more proper introduction later on in the service so we're gonna give you a nice introduction later on Mr. Doerr. At this time I'm going to turn things over to Debbie for our prayer emphasis. Good morning everyone. Good morning. We want to continue to uh, Remember Sally, Wayne, Darlene, Brent, Krista, and Dave for illnesses that they're going through at this time. <coughs> Continue to lift up the Talamassee family and the Camacho family who lost loved ones this week. Mr. McGillberry and Jackie. Our church, our activities today, the lost, our guest speaker, uh, the situation in Israel, the Alangas, the Greens, and the Colberts. If you will, bow your heads as we lift these up in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we count it such a privilege to come to, to you before you today with our prayer request, dear Lord. 
We lift up those that are going through illnesses long term, dear Lord. We just pray your comfort and your healing hand upon them. Lead, guide, and direct the doctors as they make decisions about their health. We pray for the Talamasses and the Kalacha family that have lost loved ones this week. Just be with them in a very special way. Let them feel your presence and your comfort, dear Lord. Let them seek you as they go through these trying times. We lift up Mr. McGillberry with encouragement and Jackie as she goes through some dark times at this time. We lift up our church and the many things that we have going on here and the outreach that for our community. We just pray that um, we all do our part to, to plant the seed in our community, dear Lord, with the activities that we are having here. We just pray for the lost. Let us all be mindful to reach out to those each and every week that we come in contact with. We pray for the situation in Israel, dear Lord, that your hand be upon that situation. You lead, guide, and direct the, the leaders, dear, dear Lord, that they make the right decisions. We pray for our missionary family, the Alangas, the work they're doing in Africa. We pray for their protection, dear Lord, as they serve in a, a dangerous area. We always lift up the Greens and the work in the association. We lift up our pastor, Randy, and his family and the work that he is doing here at Indian Nations. We lift up our guest speaker, dear Lord, that you have given him a message that we will um, take into our hearts, dear Lord. Open our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive the word that you have for each and every one of us individually. We just pray for the remainder of our service, and we ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Good morning, church family. Um, if you'll stand with me while we worship the Lord this morning and reach for your hymn books, we'll be on hymn 249, Blessed Assurance.
up yet, but if you can just follow along, our next worship song is What Mercy Did For Me.
Okay, so at this time we're just gonna go ahead and wave and we've got a crowd today. I'm happy to see that. And you can be seated. Okay, so uh, normally we uh, have a time of testimony, but we're gonna <laughs> forego that one today. And I am gonna go ahead and ask, um, I'm gonna ask Bolo and Roy to come to the plates, please.
Okay, so um, at this time we're going to be doing our scripture reading out of uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 37, and um, out of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So if you'll please read along with me. <clears throat> For with God nothing shall be impossible. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this day. Thank you for our guest speaker, Father, and just just uh, use him, Father, and just uh, put the words in his mouth that you would have us to hear, Father, and just continue to be with us. and allow us to apply these words in our lives and just to carry it out into the world father and spread the gospel thank you for everything in jesus name i pray amen at this time i'm going to introduce our speaker is john door i've been working with john he's the executive producer for the savior film and he has been giving our group that's been working on it, a lot of great insight, his expertise, his wisdom, and it's just really been a blessing to get to know him and I think becoming his friend and just to learn more about the different types of work that is being done out there to share the gospel to unreached peoples and it's a blessing to have him because he's been out doing this, but also to be a part of our group. And, you know, as you know, we've been, uh, uh, my dad and my Uncle Jack and others translated the script into Muskogee. But for us, our people, to be the first um, North American indigenous people to have the film done for us, that's awesome and just, you know, sharing with John, we have a lot of different tribes here, different peoples here, and just the hope that it's in your languages too, um, because it's something that I know it's also a means of preserving our language, but that there were people who will definitely listen to it, because, you know, even if they don't want to hear the gospel, to hear it in their language, they'll want to, they'll want to hear that, and to me, that is um, something that I pray. So um, this is John Doerr, and he is our executive producer, and I'll leave it there, and he'll share more with you. So thank you, John, for coming. Thank you, Pastor Randy, for this opportunity to be here with uh, your congregation and your people. And thank you, Jennifer. Uh, indeed, friendship uh, has grown over the, well, it's been over Skype or uh, <laughs> Zoom, which probably a lot of us have uh, experienced. But this is a great pleasure and opportunity for me uh, to be able to speak with you because as Southern Baptists, we have uh, all worked together and you don't know that we've been connected down through the years, which is a strange thing to think me way off in the Middle East somewhere, but as Southern Baptists, through the cooperative program, through the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, all those things go to support your work. So you are impacting the world with everything you do. When you pray for missionaries, when you pray internationally for anything going on, when you pray for your people here, you are impacting the world. And I'm here to say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for standing and continuing. We don't get sometimes where we work we have challenges um, being able to speak about the places and locations just because now with the internet, anybody can find anything. You can, you know, one click from here to the Middle East and one click from the Middle East to here. So they are re people researching, finding out what uh, Christians are doing. So there are many different ways that people serve these days um, in, in missions. And uh, I'm one of those bit of odd ones. My, my, both my wife and I uh, are MKs, which means missionary kids. We grew up overseas. My wife was actually born overseas. Her parents 
uh, went and served in um, Israel. It, was, it wasn't Israel at the time they went. Uh, they went back in 1945, if anybody can count back that far. And my parents went to a Middle Eastern country in uh, 1959. So we both were raised uh, overseas learning languages, which made it a whole lot easier for us when you get the language when you're young than having to go and try to learn a language from scratch. But we are uh, pulled together through this effort that God has brought Southern Baptists together to reach and impact the nations in the world. So I'm very thankful for that and the opportunity and to be able to say thank you in person uh, to a church that prays and gives uh, as you do. So the other thing I think that is uh, rather exciting is that as Southern Baptist, just the, the subject of the priesthood of the believer, there's nobody that comes in between you and God. You have entrance into the very throne of God. What a privilege we have. There are others who come and serve and don't know the Father or don't know the Heavenly Father. And we have access to the blood of Christ into that place uh, to, to come into before him. Priest of the believer, the autonomy of the local church, you are, God puts you in your community. And then also that we are Bible-believing people. And that is so important. You can twist around all kinds of things, but God stands behind his word. And that's the foundation that we stand on wherever we go and whatever we do. Um, and that's what we're, we're about. Uh, I am a producer, a film producer, but I work uh, for the IMB. And there are many different ways that people go. Not everybody comes as a minister or an evangelist or pastor. There are many different ways that you can uh, go both, I mean, you know that just from where you live in the communities you are. You're walking with the Spirit of God in you, going and serving and living. And as you go, that Spirit's going just right with you. When you shake hands, when you talk, when you touch, people are touched by the living Spirit of God. So that's the exciting thing uh, to me. I'd like to today just really just bring encouragement to you and just talk about journey with the Father God that we've had with this film because it's uh, kind of mirrored a bit with the, the characters of Scripture. We actually, we did, our region, one of the big issues is literacy in the Middle East. People, the, the language is so high, it's worse than kind of English to Shakespeare uh, for people to learn to read. And so many countries also, it's illegal to bring the Scripture in or to have the Scripture in their homes. So when satellite came <clears throat> in, there was a big push. How can we uh, be engaged as Southern Baptists? And we decided that it would, we would do that by storytelling, by doing dramas of the Bible, by bringing them to life uh, in the language of the people and the culture of the people. So it's not a film made in Hollywood that's then dubbed into their language because there's different, different ways people behave and a different way that men and women interact in uh, the culture overseas to the culture here. So making a film uh, in the Middle East by the people of the Middle East in their language opens the door for them to hear and receive. And a lot of time it's not, it's really about broad sowing the Word of God. And that's what we are about, without that foundation. Because you're talking about if you're just bringing uh, the story of Jesus, they already have Jesus in their faith, but he comes as a prophet, not as son of God, not as savior of the world. So we realized that we needed to go back and start with the whole counsel of God, start at the beginning, and that's with Adam and Eve. If you don't know there's a problem, you don't know there's a fix. If you don't have this foundation that there's a broken relationship, and Jesus is just kind of a good guy. So going back uh, into that, and doing the stories from the beginning until the end. So we started with Adam. Well, we didn't start filming with Adam. That's a hard one to film. I mean, where do you start, right? <laughs> clothes, no clothes, you know. You, making a nice Christian film, you, you, it's a, a bit of a challenge uh, to do that one. But we did start, uh, we did do um, uh, Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Samuel, 
David and Elijah, and then the story of the Savior, because all of those have the thread of the prophetic of Jesus, the blood, blood for sin. It's built all through it. God's purpose, God's ways are built all through those stories. And so just by telling the stories, not just preaching at people, saying this is what you need to believe, this is how you need, you tell the story and the whole idea of God, his character, his nature, his love, his forgiveness, his grace, his purposes, come through all the stories. And the Bible is so wonderful, it doesn't wash over anything. It brings the brokenness of mankind, which reveals so true that we need redemption. And that when we get to Jesus, it, it opens uh, up all of that. Well, we had this bold idea to uh, make this series, and we called it Gutenberg II. So anybody who knows about Gutenberg I is when uh, a guy named Johannes uh, started with the, print, the printing press and made the Bible available to the world, the world. So when Scripture got out and people could read it for themselves, then God worked on people. Salvation by faith, reading the Word is the foundation. So one of our objectives was is to make all these stories available, but not by the printed text, but through the way that was coming to so many people, through uh, satellite television, through internet, in a way that they hear and see. So we did it in drama, and uh, so we called it Gutenberg II, which is kind of a bit audacious, but it made the, the Word available to so many, many people. We did, starting at the beginning, creation uh, up to Christ and uh, it took us a long time. We started filming uh, in 2003. That's a lot of hours, a lot of editing, a lot of work uh, going in and on our journey we really came to discover that we we live these characters which isn't such an easy life. When you join in with God, when you come in on the journey that he's written, he's prepared for you, and each one of us has a special and unique place in what God's designed, that we can walk in him, the gifts that we bring, the life that we live, each one of us has a unique place to stand and to fill, just like Abraham. But the challenge along the way, we think, oh, well, you know, a Christian thing should be going so nice and smooth, wonderful. I should be just skipping through life, praising God, and wow, that money should be flowing. I should be living in a good place. My husband and my wife should be just absolutely everything I dreamed of, and everything should just be going. But what? When you read the Bible, that's not what you see. Because there's things that we need to die to. There's things that need to be broken in us so that it's not about us, but about Him about his spirit filling us and we being clear channels of his water to flow to a thirsty, a thirsty, thirsty world. And that's something that we learned in very hard ways in, in making this. I mean, Abraham, God's telling him, you're going to have children, just take a look up at the sky. And Abraham's living in the desert and there are a lot of stars up in the sky. Sand of the sea. Well, long time goes along and he doesn't have anything, anything. So he decides to kind of help God a little bit, and he has a child. But in the end, God says, no, that's not my way, that's your way. And <clears throat> he ends up, God telling him, I told you that by Sarah, I would bring the promise. And he waited 14 years with Ishmael before God brought the promise of Isaac. He left his people. He came to a land. When he showed up, there was a famine going on. What kind of you know, promise and blessing, but the presence of the Lord, the washing, the cleansing, the pain, the struggle uh, that he lived through. Joseph, same. What a story. What a story. What men purposed for evil, God intended for good. And we never know what our obedience will accomplish. Because if it's not about us, for Abraham, it was a different generations down that his promise was to come. You and I are in this building because of Abraham. He stepped out in faith and from there the trek of faith and the following of faith brought it all the way to Christ and then those who were faithfully held and brought the teaching 
of Jesus through. So you don't know when you're asked to do something what his intent and purpose is around the corner. But if you're obedient, then his presence will go before you. When the children of Israel left Egypt, God didn't say, oh, by the way, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to be eating kind of stuff off the ground all day long for a long time. And when you get there, somebody else is going to be living in the houses, I promise to you. And there are going to be giants in the land. <laughs> Nobody's going to be leading, heading out on that journey. So you don't know where God's taking you, but it's so he can show himself. He can show himself faithful. He can prove his great and amazing grace towards us. And I, that's the, the thing that we um, have really come, come to understand in this. And it broke many times, uh, despaired many times in making these films. Uh, sometimes dangerous, sometimes just not working, sometimes big, huge delays, sometimes no finances, sometimes all these things. But we trusted. God said, follow me and I'll lead you. The other big thing that we promised the Lord, we would not touch his glory. It's not about me. It's not about us who made this film, but it's about what he intends. If we don't touch his glory, he's free to do whatever he wants. If we're wanting to take a little piece of, you know, what, <clears throat> well, that was a pretty good film after all, you know what I mean? <laughs> By the way, I suggested da 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 We steal from God and God's limited. We would pray and say, Lord, I started praying for individuals, for doors to open, for them to receive uh, uh, these, the, these films. And then I, I said, why am I asking just for people and individuals? Why, why aren't I asking for nations? I mean, if I'm asking the king of the universe and pushed, pushed to, to see God do. And we began distributing uh, the Savior first, because it was the highest quality. And it, uh, it's, it's uniquely filmed for these people. So if you have an issue uh, with the character uh, that naming, say, Son of God for people in the Middle East, uh, that's a big issue. And we didn't change Scripture at all. We did the words as, they, as the, the, the Scripture shows. So the angel comes to Mary right at the very beginning and says, he will be called the son of the Most High. And we, we, when we went to show the film in places as uh, to the censors in order to get it broadcast, tension rising up because it's a country that doesn't believe that and they don't, they don't believe that. So uh, all of a sudden, just in the first five minutes, there's this tension growing. But our director did an amazing thing because in their very concrete thinking, when you say son of God, they're thinking that we're saying God came down and had relations with a woman and he had a son. And they think, what, how abhorrent are you that you would bring God down to this level? So how to convey this overshadowing, this divine activity? So in this film, just one small thing doesn't change scripture, but it adds a visual is after the angel speaks to Mary, there's a, we see her sleeping in her room, and in, in the window comes this little kind of a Tinkerbell sparkly thing through the window, and it disappears into her side. She sits up, looks up to heaven, looks back down like this. She says, may it be to me as you have said. And all of a sudden, in, in one of the censor uh, board meetings, a man stood up, feel, he's feeling his tension. Then he said, that's how it happened. That's how it happened. It wasn't even his faith. He, he quickly kind of sat down, kind of embarrassed, but he was so relieved to see that there was a way that God had come and spoken uh, uh, in a way. We had, in the showing of the, the, the Savior, um, had a very interesting, there was a blind man who came, and this is a film, this is a theater that he's coming into to come to watch. So our team is kind of watching and saying, this is interesting. He comes up and he asks, he wants to get a, 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 a ticket to come in and sit. So they don't bother him. They watch him going in to sit and he sits down and the man begins to weep as Jesus speaks. He said, I just want to hear Jesus talking to me in my language. 
I want to hear his voice talking to me. He didn't care if he could see or not. But to hear Jesus speaking, not in another, not in this language, but he knew, and this was from his native uh, people that brought it. He, he wept at hearing this because he so loved to hear the sound of Jesus speaking to him in his, his language, in his way. And that touched us deeply. We've had people who've had visions and dreams as we read about um, uh, on the way. And all of this, we're challenged to say, God, if you open the door, we'll walk through it. Whatever the consequences, we don't know, but you'll make a way, you'll show a way. And we will trust you and believe you that nothing will be impossible. We'll also know that when we go and we bring this word and these words to people, that your word is not going to go out and come back empty. You have planned things. So in all through the years, we produce 15 hours of story from Adam and Eve up through the Savior. And we started broadcasting in 2015. We're broadcasting the Savior. And th it's amazing to me how, this, how God works these things out as we walk his way through. That all these stories, all the way up until now, they broadcasted two times, at Easter time and at Christmas time, because that's the time when uh, Christian populations have celebrations. So they, are, they put up uh, films uh, for them and their population to watch. And this was in their language, by their actors, so they were very excited to have that for their population. But the scripture, the stories have gone out without any call at the end. If you've been touched, please contact us or any push. It's just the word, the word, washing, flowing, washing, flowing, allowing the spirit to move. Because there are ways and channels for people to get back to it. If we'd made it evangelistic, it probably wouldn't be allowed to be broadcast. But as information, if you want to know what Christians believe, watch this story. And there have been some, and, and important people said, you know, this is the first time I understand what Christians believe. Because they hadn't heard, they haven't known. And all this foundation of scripture going out before all these great and difficult things falling upon the peoples of the Middle East. God's word has gone into hundreds of millions of homes through broadcast. We need to pray for those seeds that have gone out. We need to say, God, you made a way, you opened a door, so release your, your uh, spirit to bring others to water those seeds, to tend those shoots that are growing. Because God's word is so powerful and it will work on us. So as you go in, in your life, it's really, walking with the presence of God and being obedient to him as he leads. Doesn't have to be crazy. It just has to be God saying, you know, go help that person. Go encourage that person. Go feed this person or do this. And lots of times it's things you're dying to self. Pride, fear. Ooh, fear's a big one. So you are part of a great stream. Last night was very exciting for me because God breaks rules all the time. He makes them, he can break them. And this isn't a rule he, he made. But in film, you do, when you finish your film, you don't touch it. That's it. You spent years and hours in making it. And so for us to take the character of Luke in our film and make the character of Luke be spoken and the film be narrated, by a Muscogee speaker around the campfire is amazing to me. And it was so beautiful, so beautiful to see this gathering and that God had done it, starting with Pastor Barnett. He had a vision, he had a heart, a small seed planted, people walking in obedience, Jennifer and team and Miss Barnett, all these people coming together that this thing that God has, has birthed and born we pray for it like we pray for every nation, that God would open doors, would touch hearts, and that there would be just a freshness of his spirit through the movement of his word. His word will go out through this, and we'll see how he does it. We don't know yet.
We haven't turned that corner yet, but we know that God is faithful. He loves. I love thinking about how fluent God is in Muskogee, in Cherokee, in Choctaw. I mean, he, when he, we pray, when he speaks to us, he's not, you know, asking some angel or somebody to interpret. <clears throat> By the way, I'd like to tell uh, Pastor Randy, if you could just convey this message. No. He speaks to us in our tongue. He knows us. And every language and tribe will be represented before the throne of grace. And for that, we're thankful. So thank you as Southern Baptists for praying. Thank you for your faithfulness. Don't be discouraged. Do not. You are washed in the blood. You are filled with his spirit to do and accomplish the things that he's prepared you for. And I'm standing here as something still on the journey. Hardships, difficulties, but with his presence. Let's pray. Lord, how beautiful you are. How you see things. How you work in us. How you lead us. How you gently lead us in your way. I pray for this church. I pray for Pastor Randy. I pray your spirit would anoint, Lord, not some wild, crazy things, but just your presence, the sweetness of your love, your grace, how you forgive, how you lead, how you encourage. When we go into our closets and pray and seek your face for those burdens that you put upon our hearts that we hold before you and before your throne, that you would answer them, we thank you that you hear, that we are not as orphans, but we are sons and daughters of the great high king. I do pray, Lord, for this uh, filming we did and the door opening on this uh, preparation to bring the Savior in the Muscogee language, that you would open other doors, make other ways, that this would be the first of others, the first of many. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. And we'll always praise you. We'll not touch your glory but let you receive all the glory, honor, and praise that's due you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you enjoy that? It was amazing, wasn't it? Just heard some things that just encouraged me and encourage, should encourage all of us. All right. Well, let's stand, and uh, if you'll get your uh, uh, bulletin there, we'll sing our Creek hymn. In the Creek hymn, the song there's it's it's a dismissal hymn. It just kind of just tells us that we have met together, and as we go, we'll go and to serve the Lord and to to honor Him in in the things that we do. So let's get our get our song. Did you get one? <clears throat> Thank you. So let's sing together. <clears throat> Jimmy go sabi ati mo mo sin de mawahis jin hith kidan mo alas mo metsi bo. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful day. You know, we thank you for our brother John as he comes to speak to us about his life, his experiences, Lord, and his requests. And Lord, to just continue to pray, not just for him, but for what he does and for what he's a part of to reach the world. We thank you, Lord, that our, some of our folks here have had a, a part in doing that. 
We thank you for your blessings as we reap souls amongst ourselves, Lord. We look forward to the days ahead and then the holidays, and we look forward to just being able to, to travel to Salatiska, Lord, that you will just keep us safe as we go there in the fellowship with them, and later on as we gather to, to have just a good time playing basketball together. Lord, we look forward to this week as a time of family time in our church, ministering to our community. Lord, I pray your blessings upon those that will come and help and do that. But Lord, not just to have them have a full stomach, but Lord, a, a way to reach them with the gospel, to bring them to your church, to bring them to our, to our family here. Thank you for loving us. And Lord, as we go from here, Lord, again, just keep us safe as we go. Thank you, Lord, for all you do. Thank you for loving us and giving us a savior. Thank you for the life that we can live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you at Salatiska.